Hello and welcome to the Analog Toys live stream. Sorry, I just muted your mic by mistake. Um, apologies for my tardiness this morning. I am a hopeless drunk <laughs> who stayed up way past his bedtime, um, chatting with lots of wonderful friends all around the world, including my special guest I've got here today. Um, for those of you who don't know, this is the man who operates StreamYard in the background. He's also my moderator. And would you say a lifelong Star Trek fan? Almost, yeah. Almost. Almost. Uh, yep, this is Mr. Michael Schaefer. How are you this morning, sir? I'm good. Thank you very much for having me on, Tony. Very excited about this topic. Well, I, I couldn't do a Star Trek stream and not have you on. I know I, I, give, I give you a lot of grief about Star Trek, but uh, it's just friends poking fun oh. I, i'm i'm not big into star trek but i don't look at it as, as one of those properties that um warrants right it's the, not it's not an embarrassing thing to be into you know right. um i yeah. don't i don't necessarily feel the same way about transformers but that's <laughs> not I'm, yeah you and i are in agreement there <laughs> um yeah no trek yeah it's been with me probably since I did not see the motion picture when it first came out in 79, but because back then film stayed in the theaters longer because it, yeah. it came out late 79, I would have seen that in 1980 in the theater. Um, I had been watching Star Trek on PBS and on other channel reruns. I mean, it's the old joke is it's been on one somebody's television at one point, you know, 24 hours a day because of all the yeah. different channels and all the different reruns. Anyway, so yes, a lifelong Star Trek fan. Um, in fact, I befriended my, even before he was my sixth grade science teacher, uh, my, my science teacher and I, since Star Trek three, have seen every Star Trek movie in the theater opening night. And we are continuing that tradition on the 19th of August. We'll be seeing the 35th anniversary remastered of Star Trek for the Voyage Home, the one with the whales. Um, so yeah, I'm indeed a Star Trek fan. <clears throat> um yeah. wow 35th anniversary yeah okay 1986 uh, when, when's, when's that this month that's that's well the the there's a fandom events in multiple countries uh sorry fathom events is the website and you can go on there and i think it's uh the 19th and the 22nd uh there are two different showings depending on your area and yada 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 but yeah so um yeah just have yeah. to carry the tradition on he's 70 he turned 71 this year my friend so yeah, yeah. very cool good stuff sorry um, it's all right um i apologize dean mm -hmm. from all things 80s here he says um back in 1996 i was asked what's better star wars or star trek and i immediately answered star trek now if asked i would say i wasn't sure <laughs> I always, thought, I always looked at them differently. Star Wars was pure fantasy escapism to me because it, it wasn't us. It was somewhere else. It was in the past long ago. It was, it was, a, and the stories being told were, you know, good versus evil, um, all those different things that, that George was trying to tell where Star Trek was, and it was more dystopian Star Wars, not dystopian, but I mean, there's a civil war going on, there's a rebellion, there's an empire, there's all this bad stuff. Star yeah. Trek was more, was futuristic and looking and more of a blueprint on how to do it. How if we if we get our act together, maybe we could possibly achieve this, you know, or something like it. Anyway, it, I just yeah. never looked at them the same at all, or in competition with each other personally. No, because Star Trek is science fiction star wars to me has has never been science fiction it's sp space fantasy it's a exactly it's a, a western fantasy mashup i think kirk's more drunk than me <laughs> <laughs> love that Migo kirk that's beautiful yeah i i, I found yeah. these in my friend's toy store down in perth um and um <laughs> he's struggling to stand up here I found these at my friend's toy store down in Perth a while ago and um, they didn't have a price on them. And I, I know the guy and I was like, oh, what, 
what do you what do you want for these? And I can't remember the price, but it was very, very reasonable. And I was like, well, that's that's pretty good. Like what we say in Australia, mates rates, you know, uh, your, friend, your friend price. Yeah, and he yeah. said, oh, no, no, the, the, the bubbles have been cut down the side. And I'm like, I wanted to take them out anyway. I was like, now I don't feel guilty about that. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, so I, I, I bought the pair. I displayed them in the bubbles, but obviously I was able to take them out when I made my, my Mego Star Trek video. Um, yeah, which, that was a great um, video. Yeah, well, it's fun. I was, um, I did a like a, a podcast thing yesterday on a channel called Go Figure. It's a, a Canadian collector. Michael French was on there a while ago. It mm -hmm. hasn't been put on YouTube yet. I'll um, obviously share it on social media when when it goes um, up, uh, goes public. Um, but he was talking. He he mentioned my Star Trek video, and one of the things I, I made a comment about the transporter. You know, being a, a forty-two-year-old man having all this fun playing with the transporter. And I was like, genuinely, I, I, I can remember getting so into that transporter and playing with it and playing with it and playing with it. It got to a point I was like, I'm never going to finish this video if I don't just pack the transporter away and carry on filming B-roll. <laughs> um, yeah, when I got my... Of Jen, Jody, yes. Thank you for the super chat. He says, let's get one thing straight. STD ain't Star Trek. Hashtag fight me. Well, that, is that um, Discovery? Is yes. That, it's not yeah. Okay. It's that, I mean, in, Jody's making a joke, of course, but the actual abbreviation is uh, DIC, I think, or DIS. DIS. Because if you look back, the original series is TOS, the original series, yep. TNG, DS9, VOY, uh, ENT for Enterprise. So Discovery would be DIS, but everybody jokes because of the other meaning of STD. So, and it's, <laughs> it's about as uh, fun to get and watch as an STD, as far as I'm concerned, not a fan. Wow, you went there. <laughs> Sorry, well, I mean, I always said we're letters. I didn't say <laughs> meaning. Um, Sorry so if I look over here, guys, uh, that my monitor's right here, so. Yeah, yeah, that's um, all, all good. I think people understand. So, so, what was your gateway into Star Trek when you were younger? Was it the original series um, yes. reruns on TV? That was your, your first in? Yeah, um, probably what is it, four or five, maybe. My parents, I think we've talked about this before, you and I. I watched, not that Star Trek was bad in any way, but I watched a lot of adult things far too young um, by today's standards. I'm not scarred much by it, but... Um, you know, I was excited that I got to see Rambo long before I was, you know, what it was, 18 years old because that was yeah. the quote unquote ball. Anyway, so yeah, uh, four or five watching it on television, reruns and everything, and then getting more and more into it. Um, PBS, which is our local, uh, our local, our national, um, it's a public broadcasting station, kind of like the BBC. It's funded by the taxpayers. Um, but anyway, um, and contributions and all that stuff, but they would rerun in chunks, especially late at night on weekends. So I could stay up and watch four or five episodes in a row. And then I, I eventually got the, uh, was it CBS house, CBS video house or something like that, where you send away for the videotapes and every so many weeks you'd get a videotape in the mail and it would be two episodes of the original series uh, you know, big boxes and everything. I have it. I've owned Star Trek in every format there possibly is, from VHS to Laserdisc to DVD to Blu-ray to 4K. So, yeah, yeah. So, um, had a had a good question here from oh, Keith Holmesley. Yes. Says Tony and Michael, did you guys like the JJ? I think he means Abrams, but Abrahams. <laughs> I actually like that JJ Abrahams. Um, did you like the J.J. Abrams Star Trek? He really enjoyed them. Uh, I'll let you go first. Um, at first, I liked the idea of they're not really messing with the prime timeline. They're doing their own thing. They've changed, you know, they went back in time and changed things, so they're not changing the prime timeline. Um, but then they, uh, uh, Paramount and CBS have doubled down and said that is not, there is not an alternate prime uh, timeline. That is the prime timeline. There is no JJ verse. There is no secondary timeline. 
That is the prime timeline. I have a real problem with that part. Um, Cause now we're, we're changing things and changing other than James Bond, 1962 in movies, Star Trek is the oldest franchise there is 1966. It came out and they, you know, yes, there are some years where it was off the air and, but 75, the, Sorry, 1974, the animated series came out. The show was canceled in 69, but went into 1970 on some networks. Um, so, it, you know, it, it's this uh, Tiffany uh, uh, special franchise that should survive. And they're really, I, I didn't mind the, the reimagining of it or what he did, but uh, the second one was so terrible. I, I almost abandoned the franchise, but I really actually, it didn't get, didn't do very well, but the third one they did, I thought was more in the vein of what Star Trek is. I thought the third one was good, but it, it did not do well at all. So that's yeah, what I, yeah. sorry, that was long. Yeah, I, I didn't mind the first one. Um, I thought, I thought Chris Pine was, was excellent as Kirk. Um, it was, it, it was not a bad feel. Like, I'm not a huge J.J. Abrams fan. Um, I get a little bit dizzy with lens flare. Um, yeah. So um, I didn't mind the first one, but I don't actually, I don't think I've watched the third because the second one was so bad. Oh, bad, yeah. Um, yeah, the third one, they, it felt like Star Trek. Um, that was the other thing. It, it just... Uh, JJ JJ openly said when he when he did the first film was it 2009 I can't remember the exact year I think it was 2009 I'm not a Star Trek fan I really don't know Star Trek and intentionally made it more Star Wars and like we said earlier they really are different things they're trying to do different things and I don't think Star Trek needs to be Star Wars up yes they took advantage of all the advancements of special effects that Star yep. Wars you know uh, started but um they also did it a different way it wasn't quite as dynamic even though ILM was doing it they still tried to have their own style at least in the you know the before Paramount and CBS split and the franchise was broken up and all that stuff was sold just before 2009. Yeah so uh Connor Fuller thank you for the super chat he says guys the tables look great um I think Schaefer's outdone me today I I didn't get my enterprise, uh, uh, my, my, my bridge playset out. Um, a, because it's in storage, and B, if I put it on the table, I, I've got a lot of mail here to open, including a parcel from my guest here. So, and something from Bob Breakin. Oh, I have no wow. idea. He, he sent me something after Iconicon, so I'm excited to open that uh, wow. later Heck, in the yeah. show. So that was such, such a great thing. Huh? For anybody that isn't, that hasn't seen that. I can't imagine no one hasn't seen that. But if anybody in the chat or watching this hasn't seen the Bob Breakin interview, go back to Tony's playlist in his video library and watch that because that was really, really amazing. The he just Bob pulled out uh, a prototype after prototype after prototype and these yeah. one of the kind of drawings and sketches and artwork just amazing. It was amazing. Sorry. Oh. I think he sent me paperwork of some kind. So. Oh wow, wow! And he um he wanted to jump in the chat for this, but it's obviously very very late in England. Um, so unfortunately, you know, this is this is around the time I, I do it. But he was you know, he'll catch it on the replay. So it's a shame you guys can't interact with him in the in the chat. But um, but yeah. So yeah, I've got a parcel here from you. I've got one from Johnny Sorensen. One from Evander. There's a couple more. I can't tell who they're from at this stage. So, <laughs> um, right. So, <clears throat> this this stream is actually about Mego Star Trek. So, what I yes. wanted to ask you is, um, well, did you have Mego Star Trek toys as a child? What? How did you get into that? When did that happen? Um, yes, I did not have any Mego Star Trek either. The and I do have them represented. I know you. Probably we're talking mainly about the eight inch from 1975, which you know you and I both have. But Mego also did do a three and three quarter inch line. That is that line over here from the motion picture. This playset is not the Mego playset. 
I got this online um, after Michael French's video about the this Battlestar Galactica place that I believe Michael's yep, in yep. The chat right now. Yep. They, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's from the same manufacturer. Um, oh, gosh, I wish I could recall that name. I can't think of it off the top of my head. Um, it's a it, it's unique the name. Anyway, same manufacturer. It's all cardstock. You cut it out and glue or tape it together. And um, I thought it. One, the, the price for the original blow molded Mego 3.75 inch bridge is so ridiculous now. And two, it's really a sad looking bridge where this, I think, you know, not my work, but the guy's work of how it looks, I think, really looks really holds up and works well with the characters. From here, I'll tell you that immediately looks superior. Um, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's gorgeous. So, and, and you um, get the option to build the motion picture bridge or the Wrath of Khan bridge. So they give you the parts to build either way if you like. So, if, oh, you know, oh, so they're not they're not separate. It all comes in one kit, and you can choose. Correct, correct. It oh, gives that's you, cool. Very cool. Basically, the differences are if anybody cares, um, they screwed up in the motion picture and put Spock's position directly behind Kirk. It was never that way on the show for a reason. Um, and then they corrected that problem and moved Spock's position to Kirk's right and moved Uhura's position away. And this was a just like a standing position that nobody important was at. Anyway, they, they changed it around for Star Trek II, but I, since the figures are in the motion picture uniforms, I thought it'd be silly to make the Star Trek II bridge. So. Um, Jeff72, thank you for the super chat. He says, great setup, Tony and Michael, and no wibbles. <laughs> yeah, Sorry, so, guys. My, my my introduction to yes. Star Trek toys. Um, when I was a kid, I was given um, from the motion picture the twelve-inch Star Trek Captain Kirk. Yes, um, and I I had never seen the film. I was watching um, TOS on reruns on TV. Mm -hmm. um, you know, early 80s in the UK, Star Trek was on all the time. I think it was on, like, you'd watch Doctor Who and then and then Star Trek would be on afterwards or something like that. That's kind of yeah. how I remember it anyway. Yeah. Same um, year, actually, believe it or not. So I, I was a little bit confused as to why Kirk was in this unusual-looking uniform because I hadn't seen the film, and it wasn't the uniform he, he wore in the in the TV show. But um, I remember the, the figure broke relatively quickly because Mego figures are not anywhere near as robust as Action Man and, and Action Man it was an out um, because of the scale you know he just became another correctly scale guy so after he broke I can't remember if I I think I broke his, his leg broke off at the knee mm. um, anyway so when when that broke off the uniform came off and for a while one of my Action Man figures was dressed as Captain Kirk well, they, they didn't have the articulation I that um, the regular Mego, the 8-inch Mego, or obviously not the articulation Action Man had. But I thought the 12-inch dolls were more like plush dolls and more like a like the 12-inch Kenner dolls, you know, how they were just like 5 POA kind of. I could be wrong. Yeah, yeah. Um, Dusty Toys. Yes, right. he was collecting me. He's right. Absolutely. You're right. I said one of the oldest. I didn't say older than Doctor Who, but he's absolutely right. Good on him. Yeah. So we've got Doctor Who, James Bond, Star Trek. I can't really think of any others that have been around that long. I mean, um, they've consistently been putting out product every you know few years. It, there, are, yeah. there aren't many that last the test of time like that. They've been reimagined and brought back, but not that have consistently sort of put stuff out there like that. Um, yeah, I mean, and even James Bond has had quite long periods where he right? hasn't been around. And, exactly. Yeah. I didn't actually answer your question, though. It's important because it dovetails into the community. Everybody's built with this toy stuff. Um, I did not get into any either line until being part of Analog Toys and Retro Blasting and the toy communities. Um, Joseph actually got me He's back behind me here, Scotty, and it started me. I had never had them like I like I was. I I guess they came out too soon, or I just they were never in my vision as a kid. I was 
for toys, I was into Star Wars. Star Trek, I, I'm not dressing up as Captain Kirk. I'm dressing up as me. I'm not cosplaying. I'm in a uniform as me in Star Trek. So when I played Star, when I played Star Trek, I didn't really play as Captain Kirk. I played with my crew, and uh, so it was different. But anyway, the toy line, um, I got this maybe a year and a half ago, and then I started getting figures. I fell in love with the line and started getting figures, and same with the 3.75 figures. I had seen Michael's review. I had seen your videos on the Mego stuff too, and just, you know, the community got me interested in the stuff, and I love Star Trek, and I, the figures are really freaking cool and the new stuff that all this stuff is all new none of this stuff is you have since you have all the classic original stuff i i do have that behind me but i thought i'd put on the table all the new stuff so they never released uh sulu or check off in the original line yeah they never released the dress uniforms or the mirror universe or you have the one romulan commander this is a second version that they released this is the the gorn if I could turn off the lights, he actually glows in the dark. His eyes and his teeth and some of his ridges. Pretty cool. Um, and, and then he actually, course, and he actually looks like the Gorn. Yeah, Not, right. Yeah. You know, <coughs> yeah. the original Mego line that the Gorn was it was like the body from a Planet of the Apes figure, the head from the lizard from Spider Man, just cast in brown and wearing a Klingon uniform. So exactly. it was, yeah. And I mean, that's kind of sort of what. If you think about it back to the original series they kind of sort of did that with different um costumes and stuff they would repurpose stuff from one episode and you'd see this piece that was in a torture chamber on one episode now it's in mccoy's you know medical bay for something entirely different or this costume was on this person so migo did exactly what trek did yeah uh james salzburg Thanks. thank you for the super chat so he's got my first migo spark at years old at Zare. What's, I don't even know what Zare is. I'm assuming it's some kind of a department store, is it? Zare, yes, yes. Yeah. The department chain, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I think yeah, the only, the only Mego Star Trek figure I had as a kid was that 12 inch Captain Kirk, because I had kind of missed the boat on these due to, due to my age. Um, but when I got into collecting well th there was a period in the 90s where i started to collect um the playmates figures which are really good as a matter of fact i, I was just collecting um you know st stuff from the original series um but that was a really really interesting line but then when it was with the channel you know I, I, it's one of those properties is like you can't have a toy channel a pop culture channel and, and not at least do one video in your career for want of a better word about star trek so i had to make a decision about was i going to go down the playmates route and i was like no i'm not, i'm a amigo guy like i'm already into amigo superheroes and and stuff like that so i had to get um as many of the amigo figures as uh, as possible the only alien i've got like so this romulan is a is a modern reproduction the only alien i've got is the chiron obviously Aliens That's, are exceedingly rare, very expensive, so crazy money. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, let's not forget, again, they were, yes, I was born in 74, but I was really too young to really see these because they only really lasted two or three years on every shelf, but they were huge. They were, I mean, they made money for Mego like nothing else. Star Trek Mego figures sold like hotcakes. I mean, don't. So did all their superheroes lines as well, but the Mego stuff, the Mego Star Trek stuff, really, really did sell. Yes, it did. It did. Um, <laughs> Should be the greatest of all. <laughs> Let's see if we can arrange that. I'll um, I'll give my owner a call. <laughs> I think. Uh, well, I can unzip it. I mean, it, you know. <laughs> Do we need to see this? <laughs> no, I have my Starfleet issued undershirt underneath it, so don't worry, you won't see flesh. Oh. <laughs> or my hit, my my. Perfectly shaven chest that's all oiled up like Shatner. I, you know, Stan, Mister. I'm Captain Kirk. I no, I'm not going to. No. <laughs> oh, thank you for the super chat, King Eric. Thank you. King um, Eric. So, so with 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 the Migo line, so you've got the you've got the original crew of figures, um, mm -hmm. and then all of these all of these reproductions. Um, 
do do you have do you have one that you think is superior to to the others or well i will say this i do think the head sculpts are much better on the original line the 1975 face sculpts now yes if you look at the the bridge and the figures they really are influenced by the animated series which came out the year before um it's obvious but they also have likenesses to the real characters if you look at the modern uhura face that is a thing of nightmares <laughs> Mel Nichols is a beautiful woman and the original figure has a beautiful face sculpt or a far more attractive face sculpt than this this is terrible um I don't think they got Kirk quite as good either um the original Kirk if you look at your Kirk's face that it, it's close but his head's kind of flat compared to the, the you know the 75 Migo um I mean Sulu here the whole thing's painted. They never used to paint the whole face. This it's kind of weak. Um, yeah, I, I I honestly think the originals are better. But of all, yeah, I'm I I gotta go with Kirk. I just he's got that smirk. He's got he's the, I think he's the only one with. No, that's not true. He's one of the few with light twinkle in his eye. Like they actually have like a white dot on it, where some of the other figures don't have that. So yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think um, I think the sculpt on on Bones is I, I, I think I even mentioned it in the video. Yes, it's an it's an incredible face sculpt. It's got the eyebrow up, the blue yeah. eyes. Oh, totally. Yeah, it's it's there. I, I again, I'm looking behind me because I just think they're better sculpts overall than the. the nothing against the modern stuff. I think the modern stuff. This is one of the best modern toy lines, I think, or reissue lines that I've seen. Far better than Kenner's retro collection. Um, far better than those, the non-O-ring, you know, re-releases of G.I. Joe. I just, and I'm not talking about the six-inch line. I'm talking about, you know, the, what was it, the 20th yeah, yeah. anniversary. I just, I think this is, Migo's killing it. I just, a few misses here and there, but no toy line is perfect. We all know that. Yeah, yeah. Um, James Salzberg, thank you for the super chat. Cue the fight music. I, I'm not sure I can actually read that and make it sound like the music, but we all know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, just do up the Jim Carrey fight scene in uh, in uh, Cable Guy. I mean, he's singing it as he's fighting Matthew Broderick, so. I've never seen that film. Oh, yeah. He's... Is it worth watching? Uh, it's... I mean, it, don't pay to watch it, but yeah, it's worth watching if you have nothing to do on a really single. <laughs> oh, that speaks volumes a comment like that. <laughs> um, actually, yeah, good, good point, Ted Millis. He's saying um, talking about, yeah. Yeah, the media re releases right up there with um, um, with yeah. Mochi Origins. So, I mean, re the real, the only real misses on the Mochi Origins were the first release face sculpts of He-Man and Skeletor, but they corrected that. So, I mean, I can't really, did I say Amigo? If I did, I apologize. But, you know, they corrected that problem, but the Origins line's killing it. A couple quality control issues here or there. I think, I think Sal's had an issue with one figure that was broken or broke right out of the package, yeah. but that's, you know, that's far outliers on the whole graph. Yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've got, I must have around 15 of the figures now and I've not had any, any issues whatsoever. Yeah. Um, I, off topic slightly. Yeah. But um, I can't remember the name of the wrestling figure or who the wrestler was because I'm not really into wrestling. But basically, Sal from Two Cents Toys took the head of this wrestling figure and put it on Ram Man's body and it looks like... Yes. Tim Witten from Retro Blasting. He's oh awesome. yes! I can't remember the the, the, the wrestler. Um, you know, he's he's got got shaved hair and the and the goatee, and it's Timothy Ward. Uh, sorry, Goldberg. Goldberg. There yep. you go. Goldberg. Um, Ram Ram Man Tim. It's awesome. I need a Ram Man Tim in my. I want a Timothy Witten Ram Man action figure in my collection. But apparently, according to Sal. To make that custom, the wrestling figure is very hard to get. You've got to pay scalping yes. prices, which is yes. disappointing. So, and Keith Knight asked, 
Didn't Shatner have a record out years ago? Has Michael got it and does he know all the words? He did have an album. I do have it, but no, I do not know all the words. If anybody really wants a fun night after a cocktail, you two go on YouTube and look up Shatner Rocket Man. He smokes a cigarette and talks, sings Rocket Man circa late 1970s, and it's amazing, is all I'm going to say. I think I'm going to be high. As high. It's unbelievable. It's <laughs> unbelievable. It's amazing. He just, oh, it's phenomenal. You have to check it out. Oh, go to find the Yes, thank you, Goja Shrine. says, hello, gentlemen. Uh, is there any particular crew member or alien that you'd like Migo to produce next? Um, I'd love to see a screen accurate Mugato. Um, this is a hard question for me to answer because I am not fully up to speed with what Migo has already made. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've seen a lot of it. I've not been, I've not been buying it, buying it. Um, not because I have anything against it. I just... I've got yeah. I've got the originals and you know that's my Star Trek collection. I'm not kind of adding to that. I'm um, someone's getting me hooked on Mask and Centurions. So, <laughs> hey. um, um, yeah. The do you know what the Mugatu is? Do you know what that yeah, is? Yeah. Okay, um, that albino unicorn bear thing. because uh, that's a thing. Um, no, they did the M113 salt creature. That looks really cool. That really has tempted me. I'd like to get that. Um, is but that I don't the know. Salt vampire? Yes, the salt vampire. Yeah. Sorry, yes. Um, they did that one. What creatures would I like to see? I'd like to see an Andorian. I'd like to see another a, a Klingon. Um, I don't know. Who else? I A re-release of the Chiron that Tony has, because that thing is incredibly priced right now um is i it? don't know the salt vampire sucks wolfie says <laughs> well it's a vampire yeah. I, I know it i know it's a gorilla but it's it's also not a unicorn and it's but yeah it it was a weird made up bad yeah. bad monkey costume really bad yeah what the, so so they haven't done the cheer on yet? No, not to the best. If, if, if they have, please correct me in the chat because I'd buy it. Let me go figure of Alex Kurtz. <laughs> 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 Sorry, that's hilarious. He's... Okay. Uh, Fill he's, me in because I don't know who Alex Kurtz uh, is. He's, he, he's behind all of the J.J. Abrams writing and all the stuff. Oh, with, okay. And all the stuff with Discovery and... and um, all that new stuff that's on Paramount Plus or CBS All Access or what it's called, whatever it's called this week, that's Alex Kurtzman. Yeah, he, yeah, that's, yeah, that's deep Star Trek cuts. Sorry. Um, Tim Muir says, Does Michael Schaefer have his own YouTube channel? No, no, not for me, my friend. That's for, yeah. that's for artists like Tony and Michael and people that create good content. I'm just a, I'm just a loudmouth talking monkey that comes on every once in a while when I'm asked. <laughs> I'm very happy to be here, but no. No, and he um he he doesn't have the spare time. He's too busy working for me for free. <laughs> I love it. It's an honor. Um, uh, sorry, go, yeah, go, going back to the to, to the cheer on. Yeah. Did you have you have you recently been looking around at prices on these? Not recently. Um, when I saw the prices, maybe a year ago now, they were just. If you could even find them, I mean, they are exceedingly rare. Uh, it's it's really? funny in, in the three point seven five line and the eight inch line, the aliens are the most expensive. They they obviously produce less in both lines, and they're harder to find. And people bought less because they wanted the heroes, and that's normal. Um, but they they produce so few in this line, and I I really don't know much about the history of other than what I've learned on your channel and other channels um, about, you know, what the production was for like the Chiron and some of the other figures that are so rare and expensive. I mean, the original Gorn is crazy price. And like you said, it doesn't even look like the Gorn. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so this Chiron figure that I've got here came out of a $2 rummage bin 
at a toy show. Wow. Um, it had a, it's got a broken knee, um, which I actually haven't even repaired. I've used um, um, blue tack, or what do you guys call yep. blue tack? I know exactly what you mean. Yep, blue t- I call it blue tack. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I've just literally put some blue tack in there, <laughs> and that's strong enough just to you know just to make him stand. Yeah, it was it was like two or three dollars in in a rummage bin. The person. That's insane. You know, I, I, I knew Star Trek aliens were expensive, but I thought, I didn't think this one was. Um, yeah, I've never really looked around at the prices. So uh, that's like yeah. a Pete picking up a switchblade for twenty bucks recently. I mean, that's that's an incredible find. Two dollars in a rubbish bin for a Chiron, amazing. Sorry. Yeah, I don't have lots of stories like that. Scuba Pete has a new story like that every week. <laughs> it's a superpower, I think. Yeah. Uh, Gojatron says, I'd like a new cheer on that actually looks like Frank Gorshin. Yeah, that would be good. That would be, that good. Would be good. Funny and- to dovetail into that, I was just bored one night, rewatched um, A Plot to Kill a City, part one and two, on the old uh, Gil Gerard Buck Rogers show. And Frank Gorshin was the main villain on that and just made me think of that. Sorry. Yeah. And Retro Blasting yeah. says, Shaper has squatters' rights on Retro Blasting's video resources anytime he wants. He doesn't have to start a channel, he's family. That is extremely kind, sir. Thank you very, very much. Most kind, I'm touched, seriously. Um, Cheers. Oh, just, uh, I have to point it out, all my drinkware is also Star Trek drinkware. Of course it is. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it, I'm just saying, if we're gonna do a Trek live stream, we have to do it right. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, I've, I've. Oops, sorry. Um, Wolfie, thank you very much for the kind wow. super chat. Um, hey kids, it's dead. It's dead inside two pack. Alex Kurtzman and rain on your parade. Biggest <laughs> 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 come with spring loaded soul crushing strip launches. Oh, <laughs> uh, oh, uh, yep. Yeah. Nice. That's hilarious. Ryan Johnson. My God. Uh-oh. Is Sal... Gorn. Uh-huh. Gorn. You mean Dollar Store Bosk? Sorry. I, I saw somebody say something about Gorn. <laughs> you mean Dollar Store Bosk? Yeah, pretty much. Let's call a spade a spade. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, well, except the Gorn predates Bosk by about a decade. Yeah. Just saying. <laughs> um, is there any more figures that you're looking for in your collection? Or um, would it be as, as and when Mego releases new ones? or More that, yeah. Nothing actively right now. I mean, I clearly have an issue. Um, no, space, I'm, anything you see behind me that's empty, it's because this stuff has been taken out. So I'm kind of close to being full uh, up, um, I might get that salt creature. They're still, I think you still can get them for, you know, $19.99. I, you know, they're not, again, by modern toy standards, they're not expensive. And I mean, $19.99 for seven eight inches versus what, you know, what they're asking for Star Wars figures today. It's ridiculous. They're, they're, they're one of the, the cheapest toy lines that are available. Um, they don't seem to have the same distribution issues. Um, honestly, the, the last time I was down in Perth, we, we've we basically got like three big department store chains in Australia. You've got Target, Kmart, and Big W. And Target is probably the most like, it's, it's the, the highest quality products in there. And it's not an expensive store, but it's out of the three. It's the most expensive. Kmart's in the middle. Big W is like the bargain basement one. That's where you go, you know, you you can buy T-shirts for $4. And that's where they sell the Mego figures in Big W. You go in there and there's walls and walls of them. Um, So of all the toy lines I'm kind of interested in, it's the only one that I see commonly on store shelves. And they're they're very, very cheap. Um, Yeah. They are. They are. Dean was asking, are these 
Migos is currently readily available or have I missed the boat? I don't think you've missed the boat, Dean. Um, I think uh, Big Bad Toy Store has some of the ones, the reissues um, that you can buy in packs or individually. And uh, I, I, not, I don't go into too many stores lately, but I do know that, like Tony said, I've seen them in Kmart when Kmart was around here. Um, they, they're in Walmart, they're in Target, all, you know, most big box stores, they're readily available. They, like, like Tony said, magically, they don't have the distribution problems that Motu, Mattel seems to be having with Motu that Hasbro has with every property they've gobbled up and ruined. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> thank me. Uh, spoken like a true cynic. Uh, <laughs> but, but, but very true, though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank, you, thank you for the super chat. It says, regarding vintage Mego Trek, I have Kirk, Spock, and Ahura. All I need is McCoy, Scotty, the Klingon, and the British play set, and that'll be it for me. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much what I set out to to acquire, I think. Um, so my Scotty is missing his phaser, okay. um, which is not, to me, a, a, I just hit it in the video because I've got other figures with the phaser. So, um, But I would like to get another phaser to complete that. And I think other than that, well, and the, and the other thing is the um, the the badges on the tunics actually yes. are supposed to come with silver foil, which is really wafer thin and falls off. But the benefit of having these two carded figures with the cut bubbles open, they still have the foil. So not every figure does. I'm not concerned because that puts the price right up if you've got the silver foil on there. At least two, you know, the main the, the two main characters, Kirk and Spock, have. I've got the silver foil. Um, Joseph, the, Joseph, the magician, he clued me in and actually made me some. Um, the, the, the foil that's on wine bottles, perfect for it. He cut some out of that. Yes. I stuck it on with a little bit of um, fabric glue. Perfect. It looks perfect. I mean, oh, okay. just an idea, you know, when Gracie finishes off a bottle or whatever, they're like, I mean, no, I mean, like, you know, it's yeah worth a try. It doesn't really cost you anything to give it a shot. A pair of scissors, and you know, you have you have something else as a template. But uh, and I can I'd be more than happy. I if you're okay with repro, uh, I can send you a phaser if you need one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah just um, on its way. Yeah, just the one, and yeah. I, and it. The phaser, so this is you know one of the modern ones. The phaser mm -hmm. from the Romulan. Mm -hmm. When I was done making my Mego Star Trek video, what, what what normally tends to happen with me, I when I'm doing a produced video, first of all I write the script. Mm -hmm. The second part is I set the toys on the table. I sit next to the table and I record all of the audio. Then I lay the audio track down in the editing suite. Um, and listen to all of it in case I have, because sometimes, you know, I, I could be reading the page and I, I would have, you know, Captain Kirk there and I, my brain will just read out William Shatner instead or something like that. So, um, so I, I read, I, I lay all of that down in the editing suite um, in the program to check that I have not mispronounced anything or there's no bad audio. Once I've got everything locked in, um, the reason I do it that way before I film B-roll is if I need to go back and reshoot everything, it's impossible to get your table set up to look exactly the same if you've taken it down. Ain't that the truth, yeah. So then I then I come down and I film all of the B-roll. When I film B-roll, you end up with figures over there on that bench and figures on that table and some things on the on the bed here. And then when I'm, when I'm done, I go away and start editing. I don't pack up until i've completely finished the video it's like get the video done first go and tidy up later anyway as i was putting all the figures back in the collection i was like oh the romulans is he, he's lost his phaser where'd that go and i come back into the studio and i was looking at could not find this thing anywhere for about a year and a half this thing was gone wow a year and a half and then um our dishwasher died on us right and we bought a new dishwasher and i pulled the dishwasher out which is in another room in the house and the phases underneath the dishwasher 
excuse me? How the hell? It must have gotten kicked along and underneath somehow? Cats, right. Cats. Oh, cat. I forgot you have cats. Yes. Yep. Cats. But it just... Uh I, it was to me. It was long gone. It was never coming back. And then yeah, it's a win. No, I would have been excited, but still, I, I was. Yeah. I was excited, but I was like, cats. <laughs> uh, you shouldn't have mentioned what you needed. Oh, Jody. He strikes again. Yeah, I never should have said that. Although, although I'll tell us, I'll tell a story from Iconic Con. Yes. Um, I was discussing um, the dusty bipod incident where I went from not having one to having three. So Matt Swafford sent me one, Thomas from Lyo Convoy sent me one, and oh, I'm sorry, someone else. I ended up with three. Apologies. I struggle to remember sometimes. I was telling that story during Iconic Con, one of the, the streams. It might have been on the Toy Trinity stream. Anyway, my, my good friend Stephen from G.I. Joburg, he was like, this is, sends me a private message, like, this is really cheeky of me, but, you know, I'm missing a bipod. And I was like, man, that's not cheeky at all because the other two, they're not doing me any good sitting in the, in the parts bin. And I was like, but Monday morning, express post to, to the other side of Australia, to, two days later, he gets it. And I'm like, yeah, it's, um, and, I'm, and I'm sure, you know, the, the people who've sent me a dusty bipod have no issue with me doing that. It's I'm, I would rather help, you know, another friend complete a figure than to keep it sitting uh, sitting in a box here. So I've still got one more. Um, I might not give that one away. What I might do is buy a Tiger Force Dusty on the cheap or buy him without the bipod and then complete the figure. So um, yeah, Jeff72 is always room for another bipod. Um I, I'm going to just take a moment now to to plug two different things. Uh, we'll read um, we'll read Scuba Pete's super chat first. Thank you, Scuba Pete. Uh, it was nice to chat to you. It was last night for me. Yeah, you were drinking coffee. It was morning. Um, apparently, he doesn't get onto the burb until nine thirty a.m. So, um, <laughs> uh, thank you for the super chat. He says set phases to stunning. Look at that chap in the Kirk smock. <laughs> My apologies for being extremely tardy. Just crawled out of the water. Um, well, you're lucky, Scuba, because the stream was supposed to start at 6 a.m. and someone slept in. I literally woke up. At, I woke up and I was like, Ooh, it's light outside. Oh, my God. I don't, I don't think I even set an alarm. And Grace went off to work today. So, you know, she tries not to wake me up. Yeah, and I picked my phone up and it was one minute past six. And there's a message from Michael Schaefer going, are you ready or something? And I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> Let everyone know. We'll push it back an hour. So um, not too bad. You know, sometimes I do streams at 4.30 in the morning. And yeah, it's my fir first time ever sleeping in. So Tony's the boss, but I did tell him it was going to be on his permanent Starfleet record. Um, <laughs> I did yes. see a question here, and I, I do like this from William Curry. Do you think that Star Trek figures coming out with authentic colored accessories – as chase figures prefer that or the original blue colored stuff um honestly i i have to say i do like the the new releases that have the black and silver accents on the accessories um there's a charm and a toy like feel to the original stuff i i have nothing against it but i also like that they changed some of it up you know they yeah they did some in blue but then they did some i'm not sure which figures i have do i have any out oh I'm sorry, they're they're back there in uh, in the cabinet. Um, yeah, so I've got um, Spock here. If you look, has yeah. Now that's the motion picture stuff. I have the uh, sorry, Rathacon, but this this is the original stuff. Now the the differences I don't like um, his his uh, rank braid is printed on. It's not sewn on. Uh, yeah. As it, and his, um, I don't really mind this being silk printed on because the sticker, as we talked about before, wasn't very good. But but I'm not really wild about this. But I do like that the the tricorder here is silver and black, as is the phaser and the communicator. I mean, yeah. it's kind of a nice. You know, they took the time to hand paint that, which 
again for the cost somehow those ears look extraordinarily large they really are yeah this is why i was saying the face sculpt is better on the original stuff yeah, in, yeah. so anyway um all right yeah uh, so i, I want to take a, a brief moment to um to do to, to plug a couple of things so yes first of all um <clears throat> i think it was the last live stream i did where grindhead jim came onto the channel um to do an interview with uh with, Excellent with, interview. Um, with desert rat yep. um um I, I haven't known jim very long but we've got this instant connection love the guy Mm -hmm. uh, and he asked if I would be willing to appear on his podcast at some stage. Yes. So that is tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern. I'll be on the Grindhead Gym podcast. Um, I will be posting links on social media so everyone knows where to find it. Um, so that's my, my first plug. Really looking forward to, um, to going on to the Grindhead Gym channel. And my second plug, I have to plug my good friend Ben Timberlake's book which originally came out it was an amazon audible oh um, yes when it was released last year um it's now available in hardback um paperback will be coming later this year but uh, ben timberlake is a, is a dear friend of mine he spent most of his life as a war correspondent um yes. this is um actually let let me read out one of the, the things off the back from uh, P.J. O'Rourke, if anyone knows that author. So P.J. O'Rourke has read this, um, and he says, a damn scary book, so of course I loved it. Ben Timberlake makes a neurobiological experiment in a laboratory that I'd advise everyone to stay the hell out of, the self. Uh, high risk, in a way, is the story of a wicked Mr. Hyde inventing a serum to transform himself into a reputable Dr. Jekyll. Let's hope the serum keeps working. Um, High Risk is a true story of the SAS drugs and other bad behavior. Wow. And um, it is, it is a, a, a terrific novel. And I, it's a very dark humor. Um, it, the best kind. And I'm not just saying that because I am a featured character in this, in this book. This is a very, very, you know, I, I don't go under the name Tony Roberts in the book. I'm not sure if I'll, tell you but if you read the book you're going to figure out who, who i am anyway um but yeah just wanted to give my my friend ben timberlake um a plug and he um he he sent me an autographed copy of course um and and this this pretty much sums up my friendship with uh with ben timberlake we were on special forces selection together um he he didn't pass the first, he got all the way to the end didn't pass the first time um, he had to go back and he, he kind of passed the second time, but, um, he says here to the most low down, depraved, immoral, hell raising, reprobate, degenerate, best friend that I've ever had. Big love, Ben. I love that. So that's beautiful. I love it. Perfect. Yeah. He should have said um, party. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, and yeah, that's, that's available on on Amazon. You can get it as a, an audible. It's about 10 hours. Um, it's actually all the audio is I'm giving, I'm giving up on Kirk there. Um, uh, all the audio is actually recorded by Ben Timberlake himself. Um, I'm definitely going to do the audio book. I want to hear that in his yeah, voice. Yeah. And all. I think that's, yeah, I've been putting it off, but I'm definitely going to do that. Oh yeah. It's, um, it's, it, it's, I've, I've listened to it a couple of times now. It's, um, it's, it's terrific. You told um, me this yeah. before at Comic Con, and it was like, I, I can't do that right now. There's too much going on. And I mean, not that I was doing anything, but you know what I mean. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and Keith Holmesley says High Risk is, is a great read. Uh, Keith Holmesley, he listened to it back when it was on Audible. So, yeah. Um, nice. wow. And he also, Keith Holmesley also says, Tony, how do you feel about Quentin Tarantino wanting to do a First Blood remake? Um, but scene for scene of the book from David Morrell, he wants Kurt Russell as the police chief and Adam Driver as John Rambo. My first time hearing this. Um... I like Russell as the chief. I don't think that's a bad idea. I don't know. Driver as Rambo? Maybe. Maybe. I, I actually think that's good casting. 
Yeah, I mean, I have nothing. I think he's a good actor. It's just so you got to get out of the mindset of what we have preconceived with, you know, Stallone. I mean, that's. Uh, yeah, you know. but I mean, I, I've, I've I've read the novel a few times, you know, mm -hmm. character is quite different in the novel. Oh, 100 um, percent. I yeah, it's that's actually interesting casting. I I what I, I love Russell. So, you know, he played yeah, he yeah. played a top perfect. Yeah, and I and I'm um perfect lead rather. Sorry. I've got like a love hate relationship with Quentin Tarantino. Um Yeah, I remember yeah. you saying before. I do remember you commenting on that in the past. Yeah, you know, like the the the, the films in his early career, I I love Reservoir Dogs, Pulp yes. Fiction. Um but then Inglorious Bastards, I'll be honest, I there were parts of it that I enjoyed, but overall, I actually there were parts of it that I hated. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Mm. Anyway, this is a Star yeah. Trek live stream. <laughs> what? Yeah, no worries. Um, Star Trek, Star Wars, like, uh, and Driver, Rainbow. I mean, we got there in three moves. I don't know. So Salvador says, Adam Driver is actually a good actor despite his outing as Krylo Ren. Um, and he's a Marine vet. Yes. Yeah. Um, he, he's, he, did a, he did a fantastic TED talk. Um, yes. Talking about his transition from the Marines in, into acting. Um, but also, um, what, I can't remember the name of the film. He was in a, Net, was it a Netflix film with Scarlett Johansson. Marriage Story, maybe? Um Mm. it's not not my normally the kind of film i would watch but it was netflix and i've got a netflix subscription so I watch, yeah it's a terrific film uh, it's a very yeah. low budget yeah scarlett johansson adam driver basically um play a, a, a couple whose whose marriage is is falling apart um and it is it i actually saw when they were making the the talk show rounds promoting the film however many years ago that was now pre-covid I do remember that. I remember hearing I'm in a movie with Adam Driver or I'm in a movie with Scarlett Johansson and we're playing a yeah. couple of years divorce. So I, that's familiar in my mind. I do remember that. Yeah, it's it, 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 it's a terrific film. And if you want to see the caliber of, of, both, of both of them, man, not Scarlett Johansson, you know, I know she, she's known for Black Widow and all this other stuff, but man, she acts her ass off in this Oh, movie. the girl can act, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, the, yeah. The girl can act. Brendan Haley. Um, Brendan Haley, thank you for the super chat. He says, Michael, your opinion. One future Mego figure to represent each of the original Star Trek movies. Go. Wow. Well, um, motion picture, I would do... Decker. No, I was actually I was actually going to say Ilya. Um, Decca unit. Um, but... Wow, that's a good question. Let's say I leave for the motion picture. Wrath of Khan, you got to do Khan. Um, three, let's do Kirk, Krug, rather, Commander Krug, uh, uh, Christopher Lloyd's character. Four, who would you do in four? I don't understand. Um, who would you do in four? Four, four, four. Scotty in his uh, flight jumper. I would do that maybe for four. There'd be whales here. Um, five. Uh, let's do five, five, five. You could do that Klingon chick that was really ripped. Uh, what was that? What was her name? I should know her name. I can't remember that actress's name. And six, I would do... Kang, another Klingon, but I mean, um, Christopher Plummer, Kang, I said Kang, it's not Kang, Chang, Christopher Plummer is Chang in Star Trek VI, you know, basically no hair, that tiny pencil mustache, yep. possibly quoting Shakespeare to Kirk, both at dinner and while he's attacking him, yeah, I mean, that's just, that's who I would do, of the original six films. James um, I've got a question here from Dusty oh. Toys I want to quickly add. Yes. Uh, Analog Toys, who do you think will be the next James Bond? Um, 
I don't. I, I can tell you who I would like to see play James Bond. Um, I, whether it will happen, I, I don't know. I don't know who the studio is going to pick. Um, but I would like to see Idris Elba as the next. Bond. Oh, that was yeah. That was my pick way back too. What, I, way I, I, were, I, were, to, to be honest, I've, I've probably been wanting that for so long that he may be getting a little too old now. I don't know. Yes. How when um, when Daniel Craig way back said he was done, that's that was my first pick. Make it. Yeah. I mean, need yourself is perfect. Yeah, I agree. Um. Uh, we have a super chat here from James Salzberg. Um, yes. For for the bus punk. What? For the bus. The four 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 the bus punk. I don't get that. Help Did us, you James. Mistype that, James? <laughs> Tell us what that means. Cyborg, no, just... yeah, maybe Cyborg. That's a, that's probably a good call for five. Um, Rick Jones is saying Idris Elba is um is fire in Suicide Squad. I've I've heard the Suicide Squad is pretty good. The the new oh. one. The new one. It, didn't that just come out on HBO Max today, I think? I think. Did it? It might have. I don't know. Well, I don't, we don't have HBO Max here. We've got to get a different streaming service for that. Um, same with... Um, uh, I'm, so, I'm sure Like if it goes to streaming, we'll get it here in Australia, but it's on a, a different oh. streaming service, which I joined like, you know, the seven-day free trial... To um, to torture myself with Zack Snyder's cut of Justice League, um, been... four hours of, you know, I, I would I would have rather rubbed broken glass in my eyes. Michael's not in the chat anymore, but I really wanted to ask him what he thought of the extraordinary, extraordinarily pretentious black and white version they released. So there's a four hour black and white version of Zack Snyder's cut too. Because the, the colors weren't muted enough. You know, the, the happiness and the brightness wasn't ripped <coughs> away enough from our superheroes. We have to do it in black and white. Anyway, sorry. I, Look, I, I, don't know, I don't know if he took inspiration from George Miller, who uh, Mad Max Fury Road is one of the best films of the last 10 years. Yeah. And they did a monochrome edition, which looks fantastic. Oh, Michael is still in the chat. Oh, he is. Oh, I'm he sorry. Is. I tried to um, put retro glassing and it didn't pop up. Automatically, sorry. Um, oh, I'm on the wrong freaking app. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, um, so, what did you think? Did he did he know about that about that? And what did he think? I'm just curious that that they did a black and white version of it. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, 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 so my my thing is that here we go, and I don't think about Ooh, any maybe. version of anything Snyder does. He's a man bankrupt of sentiment. <laughs> Thank you. That is what um, I mean. to, to quote Michael quoting Harrison Ford, it's just another useless experience. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I think we need to get to the to the mail because there's a fair bit. Um, and I'm yeah. you you you'll notice I'm hey, narcissism. Okay. Sorry, what? Michael said the black and white version is just a deeper drilling into his nihilism. And I said, and narcissism as well. But yes, truly. Yeah. Just yeah. how do you make Superman a downer? I don't know. Sorry. We're not talking about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah you, you'll notice that I'm in the, the corner today where I'm normally. Yeah. I did notice yeah. that. So. I've, I've, I've been I've been working on a, a project that's kind of secret at the moment. Um, I had to film here in the studio. I haven't kind of got set up. And anyway, I, I was even thinking last night. I was. I've also got my my mum visiting um, next. She gets here next Friday, I think. Awesome. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Next Friday, she's she's driving up with a friend. Um, taking a, it's a long drive. They're taking like three days to get here and yeah. um, having a little adventure with one of her close, who's an absolutely lovely lady. Um, so I don't want to rearrange the room because it's kind of set up for them as well. Mm -hmm. um, but once I got the table set up, I couldn't actually figure out how to get in here. 
because there is a bedside table here and a shelf. <laughs> I'm actually uh, right up against the glass too, so I know what you mean. I'm, yeah, the room yeah. isn't very wide. I know exactly what you mean. I don't know how Michael does it every well there for what a year basically every Saturday. I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. Um, Unbelievable. But anyway, enough of that. What do you have to open? Um, I, I, I'm just reading Retro Blasting's comment here. He's responding to Keith, but I didn't see. Um, oh, here we go. Keith says Michael French wants Tom Cruise as the next Bond, <laughs> and Retro Blasting says, "No, I don't, Keith. Uh, don't make me put you in the Denobi corner of shame." <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Um, oh, for, well, first of all, Johnny Sorensen, my uh, yes, my fellow West Australian buddy. Um, he's he, in the uh, chat. He, is he in the chat? I hope he's. he's I hope so. Yeah, he, he, he lives too. down in Perth. Um, I, I, I've said to him before, like next time I go to Perth, I'll, I have to meet up with Johnny. I don't think it'll happen on the next trip because we're only going for we're going in October, but we're only going for like four days, and we've got a lot of stuff planned. So, um, mm -hmm. uh, but maybe you're, you know, normally Christmas, New Year, or somewhere around there. It's summertime here. We normally go down for a couple of weeks. Um, nice. So, um, what have we got here from Johnny? Have you um, have you seen Snake Eyes? I have not. Have I've got it. Uh, um, probably not. The uh, I, I watch it, you know, when it's on a service. Um, this. Me talking about earlier about seeing Star Trek Four. That would be the first movie I've seen in the theaters since, you know, but whenever we went away, uh, yeah. you know. So yeah, I, I, I typically, I'm actually really only doing this because of the tradition and getting together with my my former teacher and all that with yeah. friends. And, um, I'm I'm kind of with Michael. I'm pretty much done going to the theater to see movies. Certain things. It is amazing to see on a large screen projected. I mean, anytime there's a 70 millimeter print of 2001, I have to go see that if it's in a theater nearby. Um, yep. You know, certain films just play better. I mean, I remember as a kid learning about Letterbox before I it was called Letter or before it was wide screen called Letterbox and all of that when watching movies like Ben Hur, where the chariot race scene they would you know shrink they would they would put the black bars at the top and bottom so you could see the whole thing and you got you realized oh right they did cinemascope and panavision and yeah all of that anyway so certain films yes i will go but, see. I, but I mean some of the tvs you can get today the the, 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 oh. the size the quality you exactly. know i've got a i've got a 65 inch you know nice. high definition so it's a beautiful beautiful tv and and um Ever since I was on a, a, a retro talk on Retro Blasting's Patreon with Michael, mm -hmm. and I was discussing Band of Brothers, and I was like, which I own on the original um, steel case DVD set. Yeah, I was like, I've got, I've got to get that on Blu-ray. And immediately after that chat, I went and bought it, and that just sent me down this rabbit hole. Of Grace bought me a Blu-ray. Uh, I had a PlayStation to watch it on, but she bought me a quality Blu-ray player. Um, and I'm like, every week I'm on Amazon buying oh. movies. Um, I think the next ones I'm going to watch, I might actually have a movie afternoon tomorrow. Um, I'm going to sit down and watch Rambo one, one through four. So. Oh, nice. Yeah, oh, like cool. Them. Oh, what did you get? The Punisher. Oh, sweet. This is, is a Kenner. This looks like an early 90s case. It actually looks like Val Kilmer. <laughs> wow. I like the Punisher. That's um, it's only the second Punisher figure I own, but also the only vintage one. Vintage. It looks like an early 90s one to me. So, yeah. He's got, so he's got the gun. And who... And who in the world is this guy? Anyone seen that before? No. 
He's in the chat. He should hopefully he can tell us. That is yeah, Val yeah. Kilmer. That is Val Kilmer Kenner figure made in the mid. Hold on, let me find the. There, sorry. Ah, oh, ah, oh, it's a custom. It is. A, no wonder it looks like Val Kilmer because it is supposed to. Oh, so it's like it's, I think it's a Val Kilmer Batman action figure that he's customized. You've done a great job. I thought this was a genuine Punisher figure. That's awesome. And he says uh, he doesn't know that uh, non Joe line. So whatever yeah. that other figure was, we don't know either. Maybe somebody yes. else can that right now. He says easy open. Poor oh, uh, Joseph. He says it's the core. It's the oh, core. Cool. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you, Joseph. And go to Tron knew it no, too. Oh wow! Garth the Ennis. comics. Oh, graphic wow. novels. This is a graphic novel. Oh yes, thank you, Johnny. Beautiful. Wow, this has got flashbacks to when he's in Vietnam. Well, not flashbacks. The story is actually about him in in. Wow, nice. and um, and the platoon. I can't wait to read these. Yeah, if, if, Garth Ennis has, has always done the greatest, uh, the greatest Punisher story. So, um, thank you very much, Johnny. I, I really appreciate that. Um, I've got one here that. I've all I've already opened because I had a feeling that it was my Valiverse Action Force issue five comic. Oh uh, yeah, I've ordered that, and I thought it was that. And then when I opened it, I was like, "Oh no, that's that's not it." But I, I want to open this on the stream. This is from my friend uh, Brian um, from Plaid Stallions and the Brick Man to YouTube channel. He sent me the latest issue of Toy Ventures. Um, Oh, I'm really nice. looking forward to reading that. Um, I, I wrote an article for issue three about Captain Zargon, and um, um, oh, and there's a free gift in here. What have we got here? Ooh. A Mad Monsters pennant. That's cool. Um, this, honestly, if you don't, if people aren't getting into Toy Ventures magazine, you really should. It's a really quality. Um, you know, it's 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 physical media at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, reminiscent of the old toy fair kind of magazines we used to get back in the, in the, nice. the late 90s early 2000s um it's a fantastic publication and I, I wish brian um every level of success um going forward uh Absolutely. i would really like to contribute another article to a to a future issue he's um he's he's told me that i basically you know, have a have an open invite so um lovely yeah that's awesome his channel that, that the plaid stallion channel right uh, the channel's called Brick Man Tooth. Brick Man Tooth, website. sorry. The website. It's a Mego Museum, Plaid Stallions, Brick Man Tooth. It's all the same guy. I knew it was the same gentleman. I just, yeah, I got the names. Yeah. Apologies. Sorry about that. Yeah, Dusty was asked, Dusty and uh, Tim were asking, there are, I do have, you can see them just here. They're, they did do TNG figures. I think they just came out with a Locutus Borg and a, there was a, uh, one of Q, John Delancey Q, but these two are Data and Data's pretty pale, but Data and Picard, they're just, they're not quite the same quality, I don't think, of the others. Again, with the silk printing of the uh, com badge doesn't quite look right, but I mean, they're not terrible. It's a pretty good sculpt, actually, of Spiner and of Patrick Stewart, believe it or not. Spiner's better than, I mean, Data's better than looking uh, a more accurate sculpt than Packers, but yeah. Again, it's a toy, you know. Sorry to jump on that. Apologies. All right. Um, and I've got a parcel here from Evander. Evander. Um, Evander's been sending me a lot of stuff lately. Oh wow. Whoa. I think I might have opened this one at the wrong end, but we'll get there. We have, ah, oh, very cool. How do I get into this? 
There we go. All right, first of all, we've got some what look like Panini stickers, I think, um, of Mask. Oh, no, it's a mini comic. Assault on Boulder Hill. Oh, nice. You seen that before? No, they had a. That's nice. No, I have not. Yeah. Seen it very cool. This this is very cool. You I can wonder, find some new toys to buy in there, maybe. It's <laughs> <laughs> got the Thunderhawk in here, Switchblade. Um, I'm just wondering, like, where, where this was available. Like, did it come in like a cereal box or? I think I've heard this that in certain toys included it, like Boulder Hill and maybe some of the bigger ones like Rhino. But I don't think oh, they were. So maybe, so maybe this came with Boulder Hill. It's, it's, it's possible. Um, yeah. I think uh, if you watch Jody and Chris Miwa, Jody from Gen X Toys Geek and uh, Chris Miwa's channel, Chasing 80s Toys, they did a, uh, a mask live stream about the comics and the uh, cartoon, so. Oh, yep, uh, Dean at All Things 80s. They came with the bigger mask vehicles. Oh, cool. It's, a, it's good when you got this chat yep. going, everyone. Uh, There's Chris. Chris Miller, the mini comics came with some toys. of the toys with Boulder Hill. Okay, cool. Oh, well, now I've completed Boulder Hill even more. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's gonna, a postcard here from Evander. I won't read the whole thing out, but um, but thank you very much, Evander. Um, he's just he just said he, he was trying to get these comics and other things to me before I con con, but it took nearly two months for certain things to arrive. Um, uh, no, no problem at all. Thank you very much. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm actually really excited here because this Ladybird book, I had this when I was a kid. Nice. A trap That's for he so cool. it's a wow. it's a ladybird book. Um, for those who don't know, Lady Ladybird is a is a, a, a very common, uh, a, a very well known publishing house in in the UK for children's books. They were all the same size. They're known for beautiful artwork. They did all kinds of stuff. Um, this America, we had a line called, uh, they, were, they were a little bigger, but they were called the Little Gold Books or Little Golden Books series. Yeah, yeah. Um, the artwork in these books is, is yeah. terrific. But I specifically remember having this book when I was a Does kid. it have the smell? It does, yeah. Nice, nice. It does. Just for oh, you, yeah, it, it has the smell. Nice. Mm. What's the... My next YouTube live stream, I'm going to get you and Dean on, and we're going to talk about sm collectors' smelling habits. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Although, although we can't bring Keith Knight on because we know what he sniffs. <laughs> that guy, he's crazy. <laughs> he saw it on camera, Keith. You can't deny it. <laughs> um. So we got Action Man. Oh, wow. Panini um, sticker album. Um, I've got, I've got a whole heap of the Panini sticker packs unopened yeah. um, for this. This has got a number of the stickers in it already. Um, it's not complete, but well, there is a lot of stickers in here though. There's not, there's not many missing. Very cool. Very cool. Awesome. Um, <laughs> Dean liked your smell off idea, and we'll <laughs> yes. a, a smell um, off. Yeah. Wow, I, I I like this, and I think you're going to like this as well, Shaver. Oh yeah, look at that. It's that's the most I he ever raised his voice. Sorry, hey, that's the most Matt Tracker ever raised his voice because he always had that. Well, I guess we're going to just have to attack him. That real. Like Prozac voice, anyway. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I watched that cartoon, and he always, to me, I always thought he's stoned. <laughs> yeah, he's just like uh, real mellow. 
Uh, it's it, interestingly, this is made by this is a DC comic. I don't know DC. why, that, for some reason, that surprised me. I would have thought Mars comic would have been more kind of a Marvel kind of thing, but yeah. That, oh wow! They did re-release. Um, like DC came out with a line later, but these look like older ones to my eye. I could be wrong. Again, Jody and Chris here in the chat, they'll correct us. Wow. Oh, there's the jackhammer. You've been looking for that. And is that, that's Volcano Van. Yes, Volcano Van. Nice. That's beautiful. This is a winter special. Wow. Whoa. This is, this is nice. That is beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you very much, Evander. I'm going to... Awesome, Evander. I've got, I've got a lot of comics to read now. <laughs> I think those those Punisher graphic novels are going to take a while. Yeah. Um, all right, so I've got two more. This one is from you, Schaefer. I've got, I mean, I've got a big oh. box here. Who, I actually don't know who this big box is, is from. So cool. um, hopefully there's a note in there. Um, Jody just yeah, this... uh, confirmed. DC made the original comics. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I, I just I don't know why that surprised me for some reason. Just didn't, I don't know. <laughs> oh, I I, I know what you're saying. The effects <laughs> of DC with everything being dark and broody and mask not fitting that mold. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I was talking about that though with Joseph. Um, Golden era though, and silver era. That was, I always thought DC was far more bright and happy and the yeah. characters were more perfect. They were more, you know, demigod-like where Marvel were regular people in towns we've heard of with, you know, everyday problems and normal flaws. I don't know. It, yeah. It's such a switch. Um, shall I read your note out to, to you? To me, no. You can read it to anybody you want, but I, I don't. I don't even remember what I, I think. I shipped this back in June. I mean, this this has been in the mail a long time. Yeah, June, June last year. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Tony, I've heard you mention this line a couple of times, and that you watched the cartoon as a kid. This was the last line I actively collected as a child. I hope this guy can start you on a new toy line collecting adventure. Um, Except you got some before mine arrived. Uh, I I did. Wow. And you know, you know how madly I have fallen in love with Centurions. I'm so excited about that. They are um, the, in my opinion, the most underrated toy line. Well, I, I, I've I've always I've always thought that. Mask is underrated. Not not that people's opinion. It just doesn't have the same kind of following. But um, True. this even more so. Um, so yeah, if uh, you would anyone who follows us me on Instagram, you will notice that I got um, uh, Max what? and Jake, Jake Rockwell. Ace. No, this is Jake Rockwell. Um, yeah. Max Rockwell and Ace McLeod. You got Ace, uh, Ace McLeod. Sky Knight for yeah. Ace and Tidal Blast for Max, yes. And here we've got Jags Rockwell. So you you gotta step me through this here, Schaefer. Yep. I can probably fumble my way through it, but you know. Well, and the nice thing about these, because they are modular, there isn't any specific right way to put anything on any figure. Cause it, you know Yeah, but I'm I'm one of those guys who want it to look like it looked on the packaging okay uh, well then you're the just like me yeah i made all, all of mine i don't know if you can see them but they are exactly as you would have seen them in the cartoon um yeah you know when i have my jake i'll put him down here i because he would bring his the 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 uh what is it called bazooka um, rocket launcher, whatever you want to call it, it would always be on his back like this, straight, but he'd bring it up on his shoulder to fire. So I'd always yeah. put it on his shoulder like he's in attack mode. So it goes on his back like that? Well, there's a there's a great, there's a 
backpack first. You got did you did you get the beige backpack? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. The beige backpack goes on first. Apologies. Yep. Okay. With and the antenna, up. antenna upwards. Yep. And that little hole on the right side. Yep. Yep. And then this. Yep. And then yep. And then on the front, what do we have? Um, the the rectangular uh, minigun. Right in the middle? Yep, right on his middle chest. Because that, that one turns, that cog turns, and then uh, makes the back the back cog turn. Yeah, what? that's right. <laughs> yeah, they really, these Kenner springs have amazing uh, distance. Sorry. So where does this one go? That one goes on his left arm usually on the shell. Yep. And then there's a, a range finder. Yes. I always put yep. it on his left shoulder, but you can put it wherever you want. Very cool. So now we've got the three core characters. Yes. Did I and did I tell you I've just I've just spent more money at Reclaimers Vintage Toys. <laughs> I got um, depth charge. Is it? Yes. Nice. Yes. Depth charger. Mint. Yep. Mint complete. Um, nice. So uh, so yeah. Matt, Matt just posted that off for me yesterday. So um, hopefully that doesn't take too long to get here. Ma matching centurions. Now this is podcasting. <laughs> oh, pod, <laughs> pod racing. Sorry, I read it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, Centurions. Uh, Jack Kirby was involved. King Kirby was involved in the creation of these. This line. Um, I don't know to what depth exactly, but the design of the characters, I believe, uh, some of the backstories, um, cartoon that that kind of stuff. So, you know, I, I the amount of articulation that you got with the figures, all the different parts and pieces. Uh, in the cartoon, I loved it. But yeah, these were that was the last toy line that I collected as a kid. So I hope you yeah. enjoy. Sorry. Uh, Grindhead Jim here says, Matt Swafford is the death of my wallet, too. <laughs> <laughs> he has amazing Matt, stuff. Matt, Matt knows that I, at the moment I'm kind of, I'm getting into Centurions. I'm, there's still a few mask pieces I'm looking for. And, you know, and, I, and I've said to him, you know, if you find any of this stuff I'm looking for, reach out to me, um, you know, do me. I, I, I don't. I don't. It's, it's not like um, you know. As I was talking earlier, like mates' rates. It's just if you can offer it to me before someone else gets it up. Uh, but I also, I, I, I'm a, a patron um, of Reclaimers Vintage Toys. Yes. It might seem strange to be a patron that because Matt doesn't have a, a YouTube channel or anything. But what it is, it, it gives you early access to the products that he's got available. Yes. Um, you know, so I, I highly recommend because he's a very trusted seller. Um, everything is is reasonably priced you know he doesn't overcharge for things um you're getting genuine items from him um and he's just an all-round top guy so reclaimers vintage toys reclaimers with a k over on uh instagram and uh i mean that that charity auction he did for iconicon and all of that that was phenomenal you know the toys yeah, and everything. yeah yeah he just oh, uh, so, so you oh sorry. scuba scuba p um did you get the the period attack base? I can't remember. Oh. Anyway. Sorry. Because, um, yeah. yeah, it was going to get shipped straight to him. And I, I, for all I know, Scuba's told me about this three times. That's I'm 44 years old and my brain stopped working a number of years ago. Um, I think I, it, Michael was supposed to ship it out, so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, was, yeah. And I told, yeah, that, told him it was going to scuba. So that was a crappy backhanded thing about Michael shipping stuff because he he himself jokes that he's giving and he he is like he'll give you anything, but he's like me getting to the post office to get it actually out is such a pain in the butt that it takes forever. It, it is. It is. Oh, Michael said it shipped, shipped weeks ago, so I figured. Yeah, cool. I'm, yeah, I'm 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 sure he's got it. Um... He, he, he probably sent me a photo and a message, and I just yeah. don't remember. <laughs> well, Scuba gets so much stuff, you know, it's hard to keep track. Of that guy. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so this one here, I, 
I have no idea who this is from because it says it's from Stadium Cards LLC. Ooh. Um, that's not something I've bought, so okay. This is uh, this is from Chad. Um, Tony, thank you so much for the content you create. Your honesty and integrity is a rare gift. Um, you, you honor your interviewers with sorry, you honor your viewers with. I'm truly humbled knowing that I could help out a true toy fan like yourself. Keep up the good fight. Ch Chad, thank you very much. Um, nice. Uh, this might be one of the boxes I might have to put down here. Very well packed, whatever it is. Nice. <gasps> I just sucked all the air out of the room. That's fine. Chad. Oh, wow. Holy crap. The Rise of Evil 2 pack. Now I've got a good Skeletor head. Nice. Wow, Chad, thank you. That is nice. Is that the salt vampire? <laughs> um i mean let, let's be honest it ain't it ain't no ram man tim um but it's yeah. the next best thing so yeah very cool this um that's cool and trap jaw i mean that's not trap jaw but trap jaw if memory serves is your favorite figure right yeah or it was yeah, yeah. so that's Fa cool. favorite figure favorite character like hit in, in the cartoon, that yeah. guy is so dumb. I relate to him very well. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> well, um, here, end of the... Oh, no, Bob Breakin. I nearly forgot. Yes. Oh, crap. It's cause everything else was down here and Bob's one's up here. Uh, I was about to end the show then. Um, cool. Well, that, that was a great note to end it on, but... We have a parcel from Bob. So um, I've got to get this open. It is. <clears throat> Every time I see that Goldberg, I'm so old, all I think of are Goldberg chews. They're a, a candy with like a nuts and caramel, cho uh, dark chocolate covered. And yeah. every time you think of Goldberg, I uh, hear Goldberg, that's what I think of. But yeah, sorry. <laughs> I, I, oh, oh, no, I, 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 I need Ram Man as well to go, to go with it. I but, um... about that. Tim just brought that up. Tim Ward, um, yeah, Timothy Ward gave a super chat way back before the live stream began. And he just oh. brought that up. Um, okay, I, I can I can do that on my end here. Hold on. Can you find that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can find that in YouTube Studio. So, sorry. Um. Oh, from from so we got a super chat from Jody says for the um, for the overactive moderators. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jody. <laughs> and Timothy Ward. Oh, Tim um, said my sincere thanks to Jeff, Joseph, Brendan, Keith, Chris, Michael, Jody, Scuba, and Tony um, for their kind gift. My Death Star looks ready to destroy Alderaan. That got there fast. Obviously, it's not international shipping. Right. Um, I'm so pleased you you, you got that, um, Tim. We've been scheming in the background for quite some time. So <laughs> yes, it's what we it's what we do. It's why you know Michael French has created the catchphrase. Um, you know the fans are doing the best work. Uh, I think my catchphrase is becoming quite simply, "I love this community." Oh. Um, I really do. Um, the sim the simple fact that last night 
I was, you know, it was early in the morning in America and I'm messaging some of my, 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 my close friends. Um, I chatted to you. I got off the chat with you. I chatted to Scuba. I got off that chat. I chatted to Keith Knight. I then jumped on a chat with Michael and Melinda and then went to bed quite late and very drunk. <laughs> um, yeah, right around oh. 12.30 midnight, I sent you a note to go to bed trying to tell you. <laughs> so yeah that that was the other day that was before the power talk no no if you look back i did it again last night oh oh, oh thank you for, <laughs> I, I, I wasn't up quite as late yesterday no you weren't you weren't but you still overslept sorry kidding wow here let's make this full screen like let everybody see everything to Tony for being a mate, signed Bob. Oh my God. Skeletron, the original design. Holy. Wow. It's a, it's a limited edition of 50 prints. This is a copy of my final concept sketch, including the outline for the data file of Skeletron. Um, Bob Breakin, lead designer. Wow, and he drew this back in 1983. Oh, I now thank you so much, Bob. This this is going in a frame. It's going to go on the wall up in the collection. I might have to. Um, where's it going to go? I might have to take the uh, Black Series Snow Speeder off the wall and put this up there instead. Because I'm running out of room. I just put up a a print that um, that Greg Hughes sent me. Um, that was not opened on video at his request. That one. So. Uh, Bob, sincerely, thank you ever so much. Um, it was a, it was a pleasure to uh, to hang out with you with, with Bob during Iconicon. Um, that that if we, if, it wasn't even an interview. That was just two. You know, I've, I've known Bob for. I think I said it in the Iconicon thing. It was ten years, ten years ago that month that I met him in person, but probably. 11 years ago when we first started communicating and I started writing a script and, wow. um, and stuff like that. And um, for those of you who aren't on Facebook, I posted a link on Facebook yesterday to Gary's Action Man channel where they've just had Action Man, uh, what they call AM Con 21, so Action Man Convention 21, um, at the original Palatoy factory site in Colville. Um, and there's a video there where all the, the guys are kind of all out in the car park and Bob tells this really funny story about how Action Man got his name. Yes. Um, so I've shared the link on Facebook. If, if you're not on Facebook, just look up Gary's Action Man channel. Or I think if you just search um, how Action Man got his name or the naming of Action Man, something like that, it, it'll come up. Uh, it's only a short video, but it's a, it's a really funny story. And when you hear some of the other names that got banded about, it just cracked me up. Because there, there yes. was a couple in there that I'd never heard of before. You know, I'd heard some of them. So, um, okay, cool. well, uh, yes, Grindhead Jim, he said, you can tell that Bob and Tony adore each other so much. It's legitimately beautiful. Tony truly is a torchbearer for Action Man and Action Force. Um, and, and look, I, all, all that aside, I, I just think Bob's a wonderful man. He's got... Um, He's got a huge soft spot for, for Gracie. Um, I can't understand why. She, uh, <laughs> you know, you know no, no, no one likes Gracie. <laughs> Everybody loves Gracie. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. No one likes her. Everybody loves her. Um, actually, I, I was watching Infinity Equation uh, last week and Dante, um, who was he threatening to say? He was threatening to sack one of the other guys and he was like, bring Tony and Gracie on. And I had to show that to Grace and she's like, I'm getting talked about on other podcasts. It's like, yeah. <laughs> She's famous. She is. She is. Um, YouTube famous now. She she needs she needs her own channel doing something. I agree. It, she 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 should just start a cooking show and um, Yes. Set up a camera in, in, in the kitchen and just start cooking and yeah, wine tasting. I, I think what Grace should be doing the wine tasting while she's cooking or something like that. Yep. Um, I, 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 I threw a channel name out at her the other day, but she didn't like it. I said, Gracie's Tasties. <laughs> yeah, you, she's going to get some comments on that one. I don't know if that's safe. 
Yeah, no, ex exactly. <laughs> that's that's why <laughs> she didn't like it. So, uh, um, uh, Grindhead Jim saying uh, I would sub to a Gracie patron in a second. I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't. Nice. <laughs> Because she's um, well, she's probably going to get me to 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 run that. Oh um, yeah, edit it. I'm, I'm going to have to film her videos, edit her videos. But yeah, she um, that girl needs her own channel. I'm telling you, she does. We need just need to come up with something. So, nice. um, cool. All right. Um, I, I'll let Jody have his little shout out here. He says, um, I, I, that sounds condescending the way I said a little oh, shout yeah. out. I didn't mean that to no, sound condescending, no. Jody, but um. Yeah, little short comment shout out um uh but by all means he said be sure to catch more michael schaefer on august 14th at 4 p.m eastern time on the crazy dutchies ramblings so that's going to be episode two is it yes um, yeah we'll talk about the toys of, of mask this time yes yeah so the last one was about the cartoon yeah and this one cartoon, about... the comics um yes all of that yep awesome awesome all right um yeah, I'm, I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, do, do the patrons want an after show today? I wasn't 100% sure, but if the patrons want an after show, it is 8.42 here. Um, I won't be able to do a long after patron only after show today. Um, I've got some some stuff to do. Um, I'm, in, I'm in Grace's naughty books and she's at work, so I've got to tidy the whole house before she gets home. Um, nice. I'm, I'm in the naughty books, but then I bought her an expensive present yesterday, very early for her birthday. So if she comes home in a bad mood, I'll be like, shall I cancel what I ordered you? A $1,500 Gucci handbag that she wanted. Wow. it's a lot of action figures. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, actually, I was quite happy because I actually, it's, it's a, it's a very early birthday present. Um, but um, I actually gave her a budget of two grand um, Australian, mm -hmm. which is about fifteen hundred US. And when she came in five hundred dollars under, I was like, "You go, girl!" Nice. <laughs> awesome. Nice. Um, yeah. All right. Look, um, it's about eight forty-three a.m. here, so nine a.m. or nine p.m. on the east coast of the states. We'll have an after show. Um, I'll post the link right now, and I need ten minutes to make a cup of tea. Have a pick. Actually, yeah, let's make it 20 minutes because I'll, I'll be pushing you. So, you, said nine, you said nine o'clock, right? And that's about, I mean, it's technically 17 minutes. But yeah. 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 But I, I'm, I, I know I know what I'm like. I need a little bit more time. So five yeah. minutes past nine. Nice. We'll go live on Patreon. So uh, cool. for those of you who aren't members of the Patreon but would like to join, um, yeah, just head over to patreon.com, look up Analog Toys. Uh, George Aitken, if you're still awake, I will send you the link so you can join as well. Um, and I'll see you all very soon. See you guys. Thanks for having me on, Tony. Oh, my, my pleasure. Thanks for coming on because um, I couldn't have just talked Star Trek for an hour and a half on my own. I'm not. I would have yeah. struggled. They used to say that if Magda fly, it had wings, but he did fly and discovered he had to. Jewish. <laughs> The first Apollo missions have reached the moon and we haven't gone on to Mars and then the nearest star. That's like saying you still wish you operated with scalpels and sort of your patients with cat gut like your great, 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 great grandfather used to. I'm in command. I could order this, but I'm not because Dr. McCoy is right in pointing out the enormous risk potential with any life and intelligence as fantastically advanced as this. But I must point out that the possibilities, the potential for advancement in knowledge is equally great. Risk. Risk is what this starship is all about. It's why we're aboard her. Sorry, I had to end with that. Had to. <laughs> it's the greatest uh, monologue you ever did. I mean, it, it, they, they yeah. quote the risk. It's all about risk and taking risk. And they use this all the time. Sorry, I'm done now. I apologize. Awesome. All right. I'll see you all in the afternoon.